Okay, and welcome to a, another real driving test video. This is Jay's driving test at Southall Test Center. If you have been watching the lives, then you'll know about Jay's progress. We did an intensive one day's training to get him ready for this test at Southall. For any test center, please take your time when you begin and return to the test center. Usually the roads or car parks are quite narrow and the visibility is restriction restriction <laughs> here we go off to a good start uh, restricted if you like videos like this please put in the comments that you want more videos like this and don't forget to leave a like so here we have a narrow street can you see the pedestrian in the road what are we going to do about this pedestrian Is that enough distance? At the end of the road, turn right. Inside mirror. Outside mirror. Check for traffic. Watch the pedestrian at the van. Make sure it's safe again. Check both sides. Okay. Not too bad. Good control here. Nice, now we need to dominate the middle of the road. Brilliant. So that's center line. <clears throat> that's right down the middle of the car. Looks like we might be turning left here. Inside mirror, left mirror. Signal. Look for oncoming traffic. Very narrow streets, meeting situations. Be ready to stop when we're turning into the new roads. Oncoming car and also the part vehicle has the perceptions. Nice adjustment there for the oncoming vehicle that moved off. And nice to give plenty of room for that oncoming learner vehicle there. That was nice. Not to crowd them too much, get too close, which would make it more difficult for them to change their direction. <coughs> No need to, okay, all right, fair enough. We're turning right. I just thought that Jay was slowing down there because he saw giveaway lines on the side roads. Remember, if we're coming to a crossroad and the side roads have got giveaways, we're the boss. Pulling up and stopping on the left, inside mirror, left mirror signal. Try not to block the driveways unless the examiner says it's okay. That is incredibly close to the vehicle in front. However, it is enough room to move off. It's just going to make it a bit more tricky. So for your driving test, examiners wouldn't need us to stop this close to the vehicle in front. So do try to give yourself plenty of room to move off. Ooh, look at this. Okay. Yeah, it's just an awkward position to be in, isn't it? There was plenty of raised curbs before that part vehicle, so we could have pulled up a little bit sooner. Looking ahead to see if there's any oncoming traffic. If not, move into the center of the road now. Move out earlier, more, more. Straighten up, make sure we keep a safe distance on the parked vehicles on both sides and so dominate the center of the road here. Being careful not to get too close to any parked cars. Looks like we're going to be turning right from the position. Stopping a little bit too early. And we're edging up to the giveaway lines. Inside mirror, outside mirror right, signal. Move out to the center line when it's safe. So if you can see the center line in the new road, when that line disappears, that's when we turn right. So obviously we're just waiting here for the traffic. Quite a busy junction. Okay, wait, now turn. 
otherwise we're going to turn a little bit too early into the oncoming traffic it's pretty decent though he did get a little bit of speed notice that the car was coming right on the right hand side the silver car so would you walk out if you would you can definitely drive out that helped me that's called the walkout rule we use that for junctions and knowing when it's safe to drive out is this a pedestrian crossing no but there is a pedestrian um two pedestrians <laughs> okay and there's the pedestrian crossing so that was decent nice adjustments there for the traffic that drove out and obviously the two pedestrians all right here we're putting up on the left so sometimes examiners say don't worry about a single line so plenty of raised curb here Nice moving in early and slightly getting closer as we're um, coming to a stop. Now moving away on a busy road or a main road can be a little bit tricky. Um, just like when we turned out onto this road as well, the traffic just doesn't really stop. So we've got to look for the biggest gap and don't waste any time. Mirrors, or sorry, blind spot checks signal and then get going so it did look like we moved a little bit too soon because the toyota prius just ahead of us was passing us as we were moving off mm, it's a little bit risky we want to really kind of move as it's past us not at the same time i hope that makes sense a double blind spot check is always helpful so we do our all-round observations, breaking our neck, least dangerous to most dangerous. So that's pedestrian side, left, over to the right, last. And then having another look over the right shoulder before we move off. Okay, approaching a roundabout now. We call this the petrol station roundabout. And we're turning left. We have a left-only lane here. Inside mirror, outside mirror, signal left. Check the traffic on the right, check again, safe, accelerate. Look ahead, pedestrian crossing, inside mirror. Cancel the signal if it stays on. And then proceeding with caution. Twenty is plenty. New road, new mirrors. Lots of pedestrians walking out today, huh? Right, inside mirror for change of speed uh, good positioning here kind of keeping to all oh, it's drifting now isn't it into the middle so really want to be in one lane or the other and we're, we're driving in the middle of two lanes at the moment i know we did get a serious driver fault for normal driving positioning i bet you that was it you see the silver car here that was just passing us the um vehicle there may have been obstructed from us using the center of the road instead of being positioned into the left which is what the examiners will call uh, position normal driving so i think we've just found our first serious driver fault we are stopping way too early here i'm not quite sure why we haven't moved up to that vehicle ahead this could also be a serious driver fault because it would be obstructing the traffic behind from proceeding, even if it's just a few car lengths. So that was a bit strange. Um, okay. Um, awkward. Yeah, moving into the right lane there. Okay, so definitely this is this is two almost. Uh, serious driver faults position normal driving so as the traffic light changed we stopped way too early i believe jay thought that there was a left only arrow in the lane ahead so then he's changed from the left to the right lane and gone straight ahead we did have that motorbike just ahead of us at the moment but it was behind us when that happened that again could be a little bit of a risky situation if there's a motorbike behind so i would highly recommend uh, just keep into the left lane if you're in any doubt. Always put your money on the left lane. And if it does turn into a left only, just turn left. It's absolutely fine. Uh, that was just a bit risky. 
uh, avoid changing lanes suddenly and speed suddenly. These are the highest chances of an accident. We are now approaching one of the largest and busiest roundabouts in West London. This is the White Hart roundabout. You may see the supermarket up ahead on the left. Exactly where the supermarket is, we will have a traffic light and the roundabout. That's the White Hart. It looks like we've just done our show me question, everybody. When it's safe, show me how you'd wash the front windscreen. Okay, there's a sign there by the supermarket. Many, many exits. Drifting a little bit across into the middle section there. Can you see? So we really want to be positioned a little bit close to the left. Now, where are we going? There's two lanes here. So we're moving across to the right lane. So probably going to right slip. As you can see, the road markings there say R slip. So that would be the third exit straight ahead. Have a look for R slip again. Pretty poor road markings there. So rewind the video if you want to see those. Don't forget to like if you made it this far. Smash that like button, especially if you're learning. Now we're off. Yes, that's a good position. We've gone a little bit over the line on the left. Now we've gone over to the right. Awkward. So this is really the position for a fourth exit turning right at the moment. And we've passed the first exit on the left. Ahead of us where the petrol station is, is exit two. Right slip is exit three, just after the petrol station. And if you go all the way to exit four, you'd need this lane. So if we are going to exit three, we're in the incorrect lane at the moment. So you've got to look for the road markings. Remember our slip, all right, we've stayed on the inside lane now. So we are really aiming to go fourth, if we're lucky, or fifth exit now, which the road markings did just indicate saying G Ford. Now, worst case scenario, we can just go around again. But if you'd like to just follow the road markings, then you can do that. That's safe driving, okay? Let's see what happens next. Okay, so we've gone across to the fourth exit now. We did shift two lanes as we went to exit at the fourth exit. Really, we don't want to be changing any lanes when we exit. We want to be positioned early and follow the lane to the exit. We can use this bus lane. We must use this bus lane. Have a look at the signs coming up. And we should see the bus lane signs telling us the times and days of the operating hours. So that's when the buses can use the bus lane only. If we're outside of the times, we are allowed to use the bus lane. So again, if it's outside of the times and the days on the signs, you are allowed. Drifting again over into the bus lane, we really wanted just to hold the bus lane. So potentially this is another serious driver fault for positioning normal driving. We've just passed the sign on the left for the bus lane, days and times of operation. Should be repeated a little bit further down the road as well. Okay, so we're being undertaken now. So this really is a serious driver fault for position normal driving. Undertaken means that the vehicles pass us on the left. We may also be driving a little bit slow on this road. I know there was another serious driver fault for use of speed. And we were driving at 24 on a 30 road. So maybe the positioning and the use of speed, the little combination there, why the vehicle had to undertake. Now we're approaching, why am I laughing? 
the busiest roundabout and biggest roundabout in West London. This is called the Target Roundabout. This is on a very big, busy dual carriageway called the A40. So we're now positioned in the right lane. What's going to happen next? So we should be aiming for a third exit, turning right. So if that's the case, we're in the best position. If you're unsure, always use the right lane for turning right. You can see a sign there. So we're aiming for nine o'clock on that big red sign with the roundabout. So there's the first exit gone, keeping to the right lane, keeping the right signal on. It'll be A40 East. Still keeping the right lane. There's two lanes that go for A40 East, so preferably we'd want to be on the left, but this one we can also use. Now we want to change lanes, you know? All right, so mirrors, signal, left, change lanes. So, ooh, 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 ooh. come a little bit quick to that traffic light there. All right, deep breath, let's refocus where we're going to go next. So we've got the next exit coming up, right? So we've got to do our mirror check inside, outside, left signal. Make sure we keep that left signal on if we're going to take the next exit. So this is the correct time to show the left signal. Here we go. Okay, not bad. Knowing discipline is good. Watch the car on your left, though. Did you see that? It looked like we're going to go into them. And we've come across to the far left lane. Okay, so maybe the examiner asked him to change into the left lane here to go back to South Hall. Maybe the examiner's had enough at this point. He's like, let's get back to the test center. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> um, seriously, though, I do you guys need to write down in the comments if you want more videos like this. Okay, I'm just really doing this to see how my students have been doing so far on the tests when I'm not around. And hopefully they'll see these videos as well and it'll help them to, you know, see what happened again on the test and make adjustments for the next occasion. End of the road, turn right. Good positioning here. This is a one-way road, so we must keep all the way to the right. We know it's one way because we get the double double lines all the way across the road. Double double lines are the giveaway lines, most important road markings. We're now coming back to that petrol station roundabout that we had at the beginning. That's the one that's closest to the test center. 20 is plenty. New road, new rules, new road, new mirrors. These are all good little slogans. Might be a bit dated these days, but I still think they're pretty decent. They seem to stick in my memory. Now we're driving incredibly slow. Okay, so we're going into this car park. Interesting. Wee! Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. We almost crashed into the gate. That was close. I wonder if the examiner had to use the controls there. All right, here we are for bay parking. Most likely going to be a forwards bay park when we come into a car park like this. So we'll see what happens next. If we are doing our maneuver, get ready to do your all round observations. Left shoulder, right shoulder. Break your neck. Signal, if you feel it's going to help. So I'd add a signal here just to tell people what side I'm going to park on. Again, if you stop here, just do your observations again. Break your neck. Left shoulder, right shoulder. Look out the back windows. Really twist your shoulders. Really twist your head. And look out the back windows. That's it. That was his other serious driver fault on this maneuver. The examiner said he didn't do his observations enough. So just looking out the side windows, the passenger side and the driver's side, tilting our head to our shoulders is not good enough. We must look all the way around. So we've got to look out the back windows of the driver's side and the back window of the passenger side. Really twist the shoulders like I mentioned earlier. 
exaggerate it. It's kind of like you want to win the Oscar. You don't want to put on an uh, OTT performance. You want to have a nice, believable, realistic performance. And the worst place to drive, for me, is car parks. Because there's people everywhere. Um, all sorts of hazards. You've got poles, potholes, cars, etc. Okay, so we did the reverse bay park, so probably even more important for those observations. And for the observations, they are the leading reason why people aren't successful on a driving test, and it has been for the past 10 years. So we've really got to twist, look over at the beginning, break your neck before you start to reverse, and then in the middle, and then again at the end. So if you want a general tip, there's that oversteer again. See, when we're turning right, we're going way too far over to the right. So that's how we almost crashed into the gate. So let's see what happens here, because these are pretty narrow exits and the entrance earlier. Okay. Good speed. It's all about the speed. Oh, no, look, there it is again. Did you see it? The oversteer. Look. Oh, okay. Whoo, bicycle there as well. And lorry. Wow. Oh, they come in freeze, right? Okay, we're turning right. Mirrors inside, outside, left signal. Oversteer. No, we got it nice. That was straight. Good. So just before this with Jay, we were doing our self-centering steering. So this is going to sound a little bit complicated. I'll try my best to make it sound as simple as possible. So when we're turning the steering wheel, let's say we're turning right, we start turning the car and it's about halfway through the turn. At that point, release pressure on the steering wheel. So just let go of the steering wheel, for lack of a better word, okay? Don't wanna put your hands out the windows or pick your nose, just gently <laughs> relax the pressure from the steering wheel and allow the steering wheel to self-center so that's a nice method for straightening the vehicle after halfway through the turn. So we were practicing this with Jay earlier, and he was really starting to get the hang of it. Uh, I think the nerves obviously have kicked in quite a lot on the driving test here as well. Now, if it's a 20 road, keep to 20. If people want to overtake, let them overtake. It's our driving test. We must not exceed the speed limit. Plenty of 20 roads around everywhere at the moment so just watch out for those signs know the speed limits keep to speed limits even when the traffic's sort of crowding us and pressuring us to go faster stay at the speed limit okay so approaching the petrol station roundabout which we talked about earlier you can see the left lane is left only straight lane is a right lane we have a sign on the left also showing us the road markings so we're going straight no need to stop at this zebra crossing. This could be a serious driver fault. If there's traffic behind, they can also see there's no need to stop at the zebra crossing. So if we stop too early, for no reason, we could have an accident. Overall, the roundabout was pretty decent. Well done with the lane. Seems like we're pulling up on the left. We've got the electric Vehicle only bays here because we're electric. I guess the examiner thought, ah, let's pull over, take advantage of these bays. That's what we need on our driving test about one car length. Remember earlier at the beginning, we were way too close. It almost looked like when we moved off, we were going to hit the back of the vehicle. With this distance, where we can see the tires, the tarmac, roughly one car length distance between our vehicle and the part red car ahead it's going to make it so much easier when we move off um, and this is the requirements of the test okay the examiners do not want us to get any closer okay so we've moved closer do you see that we really want to steer out a bit more not too bad though and then straighten up once our car passes the back of their car straighten the vehicle start to steer left okay we're heading back towards the test center now so just past this row of shops here, we're most likely going to turn left. Now, this is a very narrow road, and if there's a car coming out as we go in, this is going to be quite interesting. 
Um, you do probably want to stop and let them come out. That's how narrow the road is. So we're getting there. I can see there's a car at the shops, just passing the shops on the left with the brake lights on. Turning left. Oh, it's parked. Okay, fair enough. And here we go. Inside mirror, left mirror, signal left. Start to slow down, more brakes, and there's a vehicle there. Good, that's it. Perfect, well done. Yes, you can see how narrow it is. Good speed, nice control. Straighten, straighten. There, now accelerate. Good. Okay, we're going to take the next road on the right. Dominating the middle, equal distance from the parked cars on both sides. The road is just before that car where it's pulled over oncoming traffic. There's no space for us. That car stopped for us, so we're going to keep going. Inside mirror, outside mirror, signal right. Good position here. Nice speed. Let's watch the oversteer. We've got good position, turned at the right time. Halfway through, let the car self-center. Nice, bring it back. Very good turn, well done. It's a tricky one, we've got the parked cars there, so needed to be a little bit further out on that occasion. Okay, now just down this road, um, Sunny Croft is the road where the test center is. So it'd be, I don't know, third road on the left, maybe fourth, and then we're back to the test center. Good speed, nice position from both sides. It seemed like we drifted a little bit towards the oncoming traffic there. So just be careful where we look on the driving test. If we just watch the oncoming traffic, we won't see the position from the left. Nice position to stop next to a parked tree. A parked tree? <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, there's raised curb there. So where you get trees and lampposts, pull up park because that's where the raised curbs are. Um, like we said earlier, sometimes the examiners will say stop on the yellow line or don't worry about the driveways. If they say that's fine. Otherwise, if they say pull up and stop on the left, make sure you do not block driveways. Okay, all round observations before we drive off and signal. This happens at least three times on the driving test. The examiner asks us to pull up and stop, drive away. So that was the last one. That's the third time he's... First one, we got super close, do you remember? Second one was one car length away. That one was really good. There was like no cars in front of us. So, oh, emergency stop. That was good. All right, all round observations, left shoulder, right shoulder. And then if it's safe and there's no one around, which it will be for the driving test, drive on. Oh, interesting. Never seen that happen before. Okay, that's on the examiner. So if the examiner asks you to stop and vehicles come along, and that's down to the examiner, and it should be completely clear of traffic. It was relatively safe though, I didn't see any dangers there. Because when we did our emergency stop, there wasn't any traffic was there, and then someone just seemed to come along uh, as we were moving off. A good reactions from the student actually, so they just waited a little bit longer and let the car pass. Is this Sunnycroft? No, I think it's Bycroft. I think the next one coming up, Sunnycroft. Turn left, and we're back to the test center. Inside mirror, outside mirror, signal left. No, where are we going? <laughs> I'm sure that was the road. Where's he taking us? Oh no. Why are we going the long way round? At the end of the road, turn left. Maybe he missed the road. Like the examiner said, turn left, but he just missed it. That's okay, by the way. On the driving test, if you miss a junction or you accidentally go to a different way, uh, as long as you've driven safely, it will not count against us. Okay, so... Just remember, it's all about showing the examiner that you can keep control and you're vigilant and you're a safe driver, not the ability to follow directions. Okay, we do our best with the directions, okay? But as long as we're safe, that's the main thing.
Okay, so we've got to go past these cars and the shops. There'll be a roundabout. This road isn't nice because parked cars are pushing us into the oncoming traffic. And as you can see, it's quite narrow. So if you do have any large vehicles like buses, see all these bus stops here? Might even have to stop and let the bus through because there's not enough room. At the roundabout, follow the road ahead, second exit. Slowing down, checking to the right, checking to the right, and on our way. Oh, so I got the direction wrong, didn't I? My bad. It was left. The shops are here. Test centers at the end of the shops. Okay, it'll be the next road on the left, and they're going to go into the car park after that. So it's a very sharp left into the car park entrance. This is going to be a tricky one. So left, left. Inside mirror, outside mirror, signal left. If pedestrians are in the road, you must let them cross. So make sure to check the mirrors to see who's behind. That silver fence, woo, oversteer to the left. Okay, here comes the real challenging left. Turn left here into the test centre car park. Okay, nice speed. Go slower, go slower, go slower. Remember what we said at the beginning and the end? Go slow. Okay. That's it. Slower. I know he goes fast here because I saw him from the door. He speeds up here. Hmm. See it jerked at the end. All right, that's the end of the test, guys. I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to like. Uh, it was a fail. And subscribe and all that good stuff. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.